Welcome to the first video of 2019. We'll be, we're going to be calculating the moment of inertia for a long slender rod of uniform mass density. So um, we'll, I'll show you how you can calculate it for any axis, um, whether the axis is in the middle, or at the end, or even outside of this, this piece of this long slender rod. So um, we're going to be using this, this relationship. When we have, um, imagine you have three masses, M1, M2, and M3, and they're on some um, rod that's of negligible mass, so we don't have to worry about the mass of that rod. And so um, if you want to know what the eye of the, the rotational inertia of this is, how tough it is, like how sluggish it is to rotate about this axis, then um, what you have to do is you have to use this equation, which is just um, m1 times how far that is from the axis squared, x1 squared, plus m2 times how far that is from the axis squared, plus m3 times um, x3 squared, which is how far that is from the axis squared. So it's that, it's that simple equation that we're going to be using for this. But um, when we go to use it, uh, let's, let's do the case where the axis is, is right in the middle. So we have a long slender rod here. And let's say it's got a length m and a, and a or excuse me, a mass m and a length l. And um, let's say the axis is right through the center. So it's like right through the center, right there. This is where the axis is, so it's going to spin around that axis. Okay, well, um, what you notice is that the mass is not in one location. It's spread out. It's spread out throughout, the, throughout that entire length. And so um, this is what we do. We're going to still use that equation, but what we're going to do is we're going to make the, just a little, a little dm mass. So this mass, this little segment here, is a very tiny mass dm. And it's so tiny because um, we're going to let the thickness of it be um, dx thick. So it's really a thin um, dx thick. And um, the distance that it is from the axis, we're going to call that x. And that's going to be our variable. So how far that is. Now, um, you might say, well, part of this dm is um, a distance x away, but the other part of it is a distance of x plus dx away. Like, it, you know, it's got some dimension. But we're going to make dx so small that um, we can give this a, a it's going to be like a point mass. It's going to be at x away. Okay, so the, the um, rotational inertia of this tiny little um, dm is a very it's a very tiny inertia so that that inertia is we're going to call it di because it's so tiny and it's just going to be dm the mass times x squared so we're following the the equation that we had um, for th for this one and so this little mass dm is a distance x away, and so we got to square that. Now we don't want to know just the the i. We want to know the i for the entire stick. So the i for the entire stick is going to be just the summation of all the x squared dms. Switch that around. Have differential on the at the end. Seems seems like it fits there better. Okay, so then. Um, but we have a problem because our variable is x. That's going to vary depending on uh, which d, dm we're at. We're going to have a, a different distance it is from the axis. But our differential is dm. So that's a problem. So um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, put, figure out a way to put dm in terms of x, dx. I'd like that dm to be dx. Okay, so here's the trick. Um, we're going to say that the linear mass density, I guess we could call it lambda, it doesn't really matter what we call it, but let's just say it's lambda, that's equal to um, the total mass divided by the total length, but it's also equal to the little mass dm divided by the little length dx. So the the total mass is to the total length as the dm is to the dx. Okay, so this is called linear mass density. Um, like when they sell you guitar strings, 
they will tell you how much mass you have per length, how much mass you have per length. And that doesn't, um, that doesn't depend on um, how small of a string you have. You might have a very tiny length of string and it's, it's going to be the same regardless. Like if you cut that into a bunch of little pieces, they're all going to have the same um, m over l or dm over dx. Okay, so, um, well now I can solve this for dm and then sub in to my integral. So go, I'm going to go ahead and solve that. So dm, apparently dm, is equal to um, m over l dx. Alright, so that was the trick. Now I'm going to go ahead and resubstitute that in. So the i for the whole slender rod is going to be equal to the integral of x squared and then for dm I'm going to sub in um, what what um, this is down here so it's going to be m over l dx so this is our dm right there now what I've done is I've managed to make my differential the same as my variable okay I'm also going to need to tell the um, integral where to start and stop adding these up so I'm going to tell the integral to start at um, x equals negative l over 2 down here the axis is considered to be the origin so I'm going to tell it to start adding at x um, l at negative l over 2 and don't stop adding till you get to l over 2 so this will be l over 2 now um, a couple things about this what you could do is you could realize that um, that if you went you could just integrate from 0 to L over 2 and then double it because um, rotational inertia is always positive right it's got to always be positive its mass times a length squared a location squared and so um, it's going to always be positive and so um, I could do that another thing is, is if this axis is at the very end then my integrate my limits of integration would be from 0 to L so if I put this axis all the way at the end then it would I'm telling the integral to add from 0 to L if I put it like at um, the 1 quarter mark that L equals at, um, L over 4 mark then I would start at negative L over 4 and go to negative 3 4 3 fourths L okay well let me do this one um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it, I'm not going to uh, make this zero and go to um, L over 2 and double it. I'm just going to do this integral. So here goes. Um, I is equal to, I can pull the M over L out. And so it's going to be M over L. And then my integral, negative L over 2 to L over 2. And then this is going to be, um, x squared dm x squared dx rather okay so um, moving right along um, if I solve this now it's going to be m over l and then um, this is going to go this is going to be x cubed over 3 And this would be of negative L over 2 to L over 2. All right, let's do that integral. Let's do, let's add in the, the limits of integration into there. So I'm going to come over here. And um, I'm going to rewrite that. So I have um, M over L. It's X cubed over 3. I'm just rewriting it. So it's that. Um, I can bring the 3 on the outside if I want, so I don't have to um, mess around with that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the 3 outside. So it's m over 3l. And then um, when I sub in, I'm going to have um, l over 2 cubed minus... It, um, and then I'm going to um, have negative L over 2 cubed. All right, so let's see. This is going to go to L over 
or L to the third divided by eight. So it's going to be M over three L. And this is going to be L cubed divided by eight because two to the third power is eight. Okay, minus, and then this is going to be a minus two. So it's going to really be a plus and it's going to be L over Q, uh, L um, to the third power divided by, uh, divided by eight. So that's the same thing as, one more down here, this is um, two-eighths or one-fourth. So it's going to be M over three L. And then this is going to be um, one-eighth plus one-eighth. So that's going to be um, one-fourth, two-eighths or one-fourth L cubed. Okay, remember that this is this is all about finding the eye of a slender rod at the center of the at the if the axis is at the center of it. Okay, so we're going to come all the way up here, and um, let's just simplify this a little bit. The L cubed will uh, one of the L's will cancel out with this one down here, and so I'm going to get that I is one twelfth m l squared. And there you have it. Again, if you wanted to find the um, I for a different axis, like not that, this is for this axis when it goes right through the middle, but what if it's like um, on the end or like right here? That just, the only thing that changes is your limits of integration, like your limits of integration if this is L over 4. Your limits of integration, this being the origin, would be from you'd you'd integrate from negative l over four to this to this distance, which is three fourths l over four, or excuse me, three fourths l. All right, well, that's how you find the rotational inertia of a slender rod that has a uniform mass density. All right, thank you. Bye.